Hey, what is going on guys? Judex here. Um, today I'll be giving you guys a brand new ga gaming series here, and it's going to be Legend of Korra for Xbox One. Um, so this game has been out for a while. Actually, I uh, believe it came out after the end of, uh, I think it was the end of Season 3 actually. And the story uh, takes place in between um, uh, Chapters 2 and 3 in the series. Um, it's $14.99 on... Uh, I believe it still should be $14.99 on Xbox One, Xbox 360 if you want to pick it up. Um, uh, just a little disclaimer here, I have actually played through the story mode a couple times before. I um, absolutely love the game for you know, the price and what it is. Um, I like that it has a, its own unique story to it, just adds a little bit of extra, um, you know, just some extra lore to the series. Um, for those of you that watch my Yu-Gi-Oh! videos and see my Avatar gameplay map, you know I absolutely love the Avatar series. I love the Korra series just as much. Um, I mean, I'll admit it, it got off to a bit of a rough start with season one, uh, but it recovered very nicely with Amon and his plans. Um, he was, it, it was all really, really fought out. Like the second half of season one, I just hated how Amon had to go in the end. There, it was kind of, uh, kind of crap how he had to die there. But um, season two, um, or I'm saying season, but it's technically chapter two. Um, the best part about that, honestly, was uh, Avatar One. Uh, the couple episodes that featured him, and then um, um, the the ending was kind of significant with uh, opening the spirit portals. Um, you know, it's very significant for the Avatar universe. Uh, season three, or I keep saying season chapter three, was absolutely my favorite with um, with um, Zaheer. Zaheer is probably even above Amon my favorite uh, villain, probably at least for all the Avatar universe, if not just in general, like. His um, his purpose behind why he was doing things was so well thought out. It was actually it actually made sense, and it really kind of made you. If you were suspending disbelief, it really made you question, um, you know, if what he was doing was really justified. Which yeah, that, that's a good thing to have. Like it kind of makes you question. Well, is this guy really that wrong? Um, so yeah, that was absolutely great. Season four was great as well. Not as good as season three in my opinion, but the ending was fantastic. I'm all for what Nickelodeon did on that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, before we get started here, I got a funny story about, uh, how I found out about the ending of, uh, the Corey series. Um, I think it was the day after the episode actually came out, um, my ex-girlfriend ended up texting me, and she actually, um, just a short story on that, um, we had dated for 10 months, and, uh, we broke up, and she basically came out to me as being a lesbian, um, and uh, while we were dating, um, I got her into watching Legend of Korra, and um, I think we were in season three, and I started to see a little bit of a, not really a role, I saw how and Asami were connecting, that, and I just kind of jokingly said to her, you know, they, they would make a really good couple, you know, that, that would be really cool, because I honestly did feel like they would be a better couple than, um, like, Korra and Bolin, or Korra and Mako, um, especially Korra and Mako, honestly. Um, but I'd never thought that in my wild Nickelodeon would actually go through with it, and boy did they ever. Um, so she actually texts me the day after the episode comes out, and she's like, you will not believe what happened. You were actually right. And I'm just like, give me the screenshot. I'm like, no way that actually happened. Like the screenshot of Korra and Asami looking at each other um, with the light in the background. And I see the whole episode, I mean, absolutely fantastic action thriller episode throughout um i was really on the edge of my edge of my seat throughout the whole thing um kind of forgetting about that uh part honestly and then my jaw just dropped and i was stunned at the end when they that and to find out that you know the, the creators came out a few days later and were like yeah this is canon we're going to be making comics on this that you know korasami is a thing fantastic a absolutely fantastic um yeah i, I i'm all for um, kind of putting, um, you know, those kind of relationships out there more into the mainstream, just to build awareness of it and hopefully build tolerance of it as well. Uh, that's definitely a great thing. Um, so enough chat here. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the way I'm going to try to do this on, um, YouTube is to break it up between, break up the episodes between chapters, uh, a chapter per episode. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with a new game here. All right. So I can't remember how I did this before. Um, I think I did casual. Um, I guess I'll go. I'll try to do normal here. Um, it has been a while since I played, so Fire. forgive me if I Air. really do badly here. Water. Only the Avatar can master all four elements and bring balance to the world. 
Do, 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 do. Another thing I love about the Avatar series is just the background music. It's always on point. Always on point. All right, here we go. So we start off here with a bit of a um, boss pit fighting sequence where you basically have to fight a bunch of these uh, spirits. Um, and then it shows you on the screen there um, your um, your basic uh, attacks there, the light attack, the heavy attack, and the jump. I think that's pretty much all you have access to in the beginning. I don't even think it has you change uh, elements yet, if I remember correctly. Uh, you're just water right now with Korra. And then you use the right analog stick to move the camera around. Um, I remember the couple times I played this story mode, the one thing I didn't like was uh, the camera angles on this game. Especially when you get to like more smaller uh, restricted maps, it got to be a bit of a pain. It would actually get in your way. Oh, okay, it switches you between elements as you go, it looks like. Fire! Fire! fire. I love fire. I would say, well, actually, for a while, it was my favorite of the four elements, but um, what really got me more into waterbending was um, the introduction of bloodbending with the core. I just love the, the concept of bloodbending. I know it probably makes me a sick person, but um, yeah, I, I just absolutely love it. Well, I had an over a hundred hit combo there. That's awesome. I wonder. Ooh. So yeah, you're not meant to get through all of them. You're meant to lose here, but you're you're just getting as much of a combo as you can. No, no, she wasn't ready. She wasn't. I love this announcer's voice. <laughs> Monster thingamajig. Yeah, I totally forgot about this um, uh, pro bending part. So to introduce the mechanics behind pro bending here, there's actually a pro bending mode that you unlock once you um, finish the story, as you may have seen in the main menu. So you basically have to. Um... Oh yeah, it's right. The art, the right trigger is your uh, dodge away button. Um, that'll become really relevant here with this mode. So basically all I'm doing is just attacking into them and um, dodging their attacks is really all I'm doing. And then you use the uh, right analog stick to uh, move your target. I believe it won't actually let me move the other guys back until I knock him back. The front guy here. Yep. Alright, so it'll let me advance. Ooh, I got knocked back. Well, shite. Yeah, I am not doing good here. I forgot this is on normal. I think I played casual uh, the one time I beat this. Yeah, so I need to dodge a lot more here. Uh, hit my targets, too. Okay, so we're back to where we started here. Only got 52 seconds. Let's see if we can do it. We basically have 
knock them out this round or else we lose because we are in round three and they've already eliminated uh, Mako and Bolin. So we are kind of screwed. Scrooge McDuck. No, I don't want to. Ah, come on. Looks like I'll probably be doing this over again. So yeah, a little disclaimer. When I did beat this the first time, I was a scrub and did this on casual. Because um, I was getting really frustrated with uh, some of the boss battles. Yeah, so I ran out of time there. Which means they got the win. So yeah, looks like, looks like you got to see me uh, royally screw up there. Uh, let's see if we can recover from that. Round three. Round three. At least we got to hear that again. Oh, he is blocking, man. That's another thing I forgot you could do is block. I don't really like blocking as much as I like dodging. I'm just doing uh, quick attacks. Okay, careful now. Can't take too many attacks. Because the bad thing is, like, your health um, goes with you um, as you move up. So, like, I don't recover back to full health when I move up to the next stage here. Man, they just keep finding their targets, even though I keep dodging away. Okay, so we got him back to the last level here, which means we can start knocking him off. And they recover back to full health after they get knocked back, which kind of sucks, but you don't. All right, we got it. Be the leaf. Well, I thought it's a hundred times. Cool. All right, so we got a silver medal for that. Um, with these little sequences, um, you'll see like this sequence and then some of the um, Naga sequences when we have to ride on Naga. Um, it'll give you like um, um, a certain ranking based on how you did. I love how this series is based on the Roaring Twenties. Um, little side note, uh, the Roaring Twenties is probably one of, if not my favorite times in uh, history to study. Um, hey, all right, so we're going to see a little bit of the new villain here Hello? for this game. Are you all right? A little spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ouch. She gets knocked to fudge out. But yeah, I absolutely love the uh, Roaring Twenties. Um, um, one of my favorite books of all time, actually, is The Great Gatsby. Absolutely loved it. Um, I I don't know what it is about the Roaring Twenties I like. I just like the the background. Um, you know, some of the really old cars, uh, the buildings. Um, you know, the the fact like that everybody had to sneak around um, during prohibition and like you know sell alcohol on the side. And I'm not even an alcohol person myself. I've never had a sip, and I'm 21 years old, oddly enough. But yeah, it just it just fascinates me. Um, and I really like how they incorporated that with the series, with um, you know the cars and um, some of the technology as well. Um, 